Hello everyone, I am Dr. Nilab Agrawal and today I am going to teach you pyogenic liver abscess. First of all, etiology. Etiology may be divided into several parts. First and the most important and the most common reason include cholangitis that is caused due to obstruction. And the most common cause of cholangitis in Asia is common bile duct stone and in western world it is malignancy. The next cause include the intra-abdominal sepsis that reach liver via ascending uh, portal vein infection that is also referred to as pyeloflebitis. The examples of intra-abdominal sepsis include appendicitis, diverticular disease, inflammatory bowel disease, pelvic inflammatory disease and perforation of hollow viscous. The next cause include some systemic infections that reach liver via hepatic artery. The examples include endocarditis, pneumonia and osteomyelitis. Then there may be some hydrogenic causes like bilioentric anastomosis, hepatic artery embolization, and thermal ablative procedures. Then there are some cryptogenic causes that have no etiology that may be basically due to undiagnosed abdominal disease or infections. Now we see the organisms associated. So the most common organisms are E. coli and Streptococcus miliary that are more common than Klebsiella but in India Klebsiella is much more common. Another important point, in children with granulomatous disease, Staphylococcus is the most common causative organism and these children have an increased risk of subacute bacterial endocarditis. Others bacteria, others bacteria include Streptococcus faecalis and Proteus vulgaris. Now we will see the roots of infection. That may be basically five roots of infection. The first three are depicted in a form of a simple diagram that is also referred to as the Mickey Mouse face. The right ear depicts the common bile duct, that is the most common cause. The head depicts the portal vein, that is the second most common cause. And the left ear depicts the hepatic artery, that is the third most common cause. The direct causes may include pyothorax, subdiaphragmatic abscess, chronic suppurative cholecystitis, and perinephric abscess. And the trauma may lead to intrahepatic hematoma or necrosis, which may be uh, followed by secondary infection. Now, coming on to the clinical features, it is most commonly seen in males, that is, has a ratio of 1.5 is to 1. It is seen in 5 to 6 decade. 50% patients with single abscess in right lobe. The alcoholic are more prone to this disease. The most common symptoms are fever plus right upper quadrant pain plus 25% patient present with obstructive jaundice which is caused due to common bile duct stones. The predisposing conditions include elderly with diabetes mellitus and immunocompromised patients. The diagnosis, it can be investigation of choice is ultrasound and confirmed by CT. Rarely it is diagnosed on x-ray. So we will see the CT of two patients. It has a very high sensitivity of around 95%. The first film shows the air fluid level in liver and the rim is enhanced. In the second film, we can see the multiloculated hepatic abscess. In this x-ray, we can see a air pocket in right upper quadrant, abnormal air pocket. Now, in laboratory findings, the most common findings include the increased alkaline phosphatase due to obstruction, abnormal liver function test, increased WBCs and others. We will confirm it by aspiration and culture of the pus. Now the differential diagnosis include amoebic liver abscess and echinococcal cyst. We will differentiate it from the amoebic liver abscess. In amoebic liver abscess, the age basically young individuals and pyogenic older individuals the male is to female ratio in amoebic 10 is to 1, in pyogenic 1.5 is to 1, 
clinical features fever is present in both but chills are common in pyogenic jaundice with increased bilirubin is common in pyogenic the culture is positive for pyogenic and the serology is positive for amoebic with anti amoebic antibodies now coming on to the treatment treatment basically includes which is also the treatment of choice percutaneous catheter drainage with 2 weeks of iv antibiotics plus 4 weeks of oral antibiotics the combinations for iv antibiotics may include the first combination may be a penicillin aminoglycoside and metrogel the second combination may be third generation cephalosporin plus metrogel the follow up is done with usg for the first for first month it is done weekly and for the next one year it is done monthly coming on to the complications the most specific complication associated with this is endogenous endophthalmitis that is found associated with klebsiella in patients with diabetes mellitus with an incidence of 3% the next it may rupture into the peritoneal cavity the pleural cavity and may involve the diaphragm in peritoneal cavity it may cause peritonitis for which exploratory laparotomy and peritoneal lavage has to be done in pleural cavity it may form empyema for which icd or thoracotomy has to be done if diaphragm is involved it may lead to cuff or dyspnea thank you so much please like share and subscribe my video thank you